As we kick off 2024, many of us are looking to get our financial houses in order. Two-thirds of Americans are considering a financial resolution for the new year, according to an annual survey by Fidelity Investments. About 41% said their top goal for 2024 is to save more. We all can agree with that. CBS News business analyst Jill Schlesinger is here to make sure that you can hit those mm. targets like an archery competition. What's up? How you doing? Great. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. So let's get right into it. Um, what are some of the top financial goals that you see from the people? Out there? You know what? This this is the same goal that we always see, which is that save more, but also pay down debt because okay. a lot of people accumulated debt after they went through all their pandemic savings. They gathered up some debt. But also when you look at this, spend less is mm -hmm. part of this. Now, what's interesting in this Fidelity survey that I found really notable, uh -huh. nine out of 10 respondents said that they were either in the same or better condition than a year ago. Okay. That kind of flies in the face of what other people have been saying in many other surveys. And it may have something to do with the fact that Fidelity is putting a survey out of people who have investments. Uh, yeah. Maybe they own That's homes. Uh, and you say, wow, if you own a home, the home value's gone up. Right. If you have investments, 2023 was a good year. But overall, this is very consistent with what we've seen over the last 15 years of this study. So some tips that people can take away in terms of actually starting to make that resolution, whether it's a resolution or not, but just to save a little bit more and reduce debt. What do you think is the common denominator of all of this is understanding how much money is coming into your household and how much money is going out. I am not going to say budget, because I don't like that word. Yeah. But I do like tracking. And you know what? Technology can really help you. Of course, every major bank or financial institution has some sort of tracking app, but there are a lot of really cool free versions mm -hmm. of, of apps that are amazing. So there's something called Pocket Guard. There is something oh. called Good Budget. One that I like is called Honeydew, D-U-E. Honeydew is for couples because I think couples have some problems managing money. Oh. We'll do that during Valentine's oh, Like Day. a honeydew list. You got it. And then there is something called You Need a Budget, Y-N-A-B. Now, this is free for 34 days, but then you pay for it. A lot of people that I hear from say, Paying for the app makes me feel more like I have to use have it, to use and it. they stay with it Like longer. a gym membership. Exactly yeah. right. Of course, some people are going to blow it off. But without tracking your money, you don't know how much money you can free up to actually pay down that debt. How much money every week can you find? What is it that you can do to cut out of your spending today? If you don't know what you're spending money on, if you're just mindless, yeah. then you have no idea. I think there's no replacement for doing that really terrible thing of printing out the bank statement or printing out the credit card statement and, and just, just going through walking it Walking through it, right? And like, what, oh. is, what is fixed and what is flexible? Or just even looking at every single receipt. You know when they say, do you want a paper receipt? You say, nah. Mm -hmm. Take the receipt. Do it for 90 days. Track it. Ooh. Because un okay. unlike anything Thing else, unless you have a concrete way to make these things come to life, there is no way you're going to achieve it. So even if you say, I want to save more, how much more? I'm going to put 6% in my 401k. Mm -hmm. If you say, I want to spend less, what am I, what's the number? What am I committing what does that to? Look like? What does it look like? Yeah. Put it down on paper, write it in your phone, share it with your family. If people do save and they want to invest with that savings, what's your advice for people getting started? Well, look, we just looked at the last two years of investing, and it's a great lesson of just putting money to work on an ongoing basis. So what's the easiest way to invest is to use a retirement plan through work. In 2022, you'd come to me and say, that was a terrible bit of advice. We had a terrible year in 2022. Last year, you got paid handsomely. Markets came roaring back, an yep. amazing turnaround. So the way you get started is you start small. If you don't have a retirement plan at work, you open up an IRA, you open up a Roth IRA at any investment house. You use what's called an index fund. It replicates Kate's an index like the S&P 500, like the NASDAQ, a little bit every week. You squirrel it away. This works. There's no magic man behind the curtain. I'm sorry, no wizard. Mm. So here I am. I'm Glinda the Good Witch, and I'm telling you, just do <laughs> you it gotta do the work. every single week. And Glinda it does the work. Good Witch yeah. with the nice knee-high boots. I was Ooh, okay. ah, working. That's Starting good. the new year off right. <laughs> Okay, Jill. <laughs> <laughs> that was not a save. Those were a splurge right there. That's right. Jill I like them. As always, thank you. Sure.